Holy crap, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com with Ignition, the Sork Build DPS Juggernaut. Oh my god, this thing is ripping and gripping. Frag out. The original hits like a truck is back, and this time doing way more damage than I even thought possible. This intro video here shows me in Spindle Clutch almost pulling 14,000 single target DPS. Yes, I get a little bit excited. You want to watch this video if you're coming back to Elder Scrolls Online, you love your Sork, and you want to produce high-end damage for dungeons, trials, anything, and have fun and make it easy. This build is one of my favorite all time, and it makes you feel like you are a flying around warlock juggernaut badass. That's right. This build, the ignition, stay tuned, skill, bills, gear, everything you need to know to make you a rockstar Sork DPS. Let's cut right to the chase and talk about skills for this build and exactly how I use it and the rotations that I use to produce high-end damage. So first off, I'm going to go to the tree. Thank you, Bobby Dick, for the, the uh, helpful tip here. The very first, we have two toggled on abilities. So on both bars, we have the same both abilities. Yes, that lightens the load for exactly what we need to do to rotate in between. Now, as DPS has changed in Update 6, there's basically two major buffs you want to keep active at all times. One is Spell Critical via Major Prophecy. So we use Inner Light. Why do we use Inner Light? Inner Light gives us Spell Critical by 10% and also 5% extra magic. Remember, magic and spell power combined determine how hard we hit. So we're always going to turn this sucker on. That's number one. So with a 10% spell crit bonus right there, I'm sitting at 49% critical, which we'll get to gear later. The second ability that we're going to keep active nearly all times is Power Surge. Yes, the other morph of Critical Surge. I don't even have it leveled up yet because I never used it before. What this does is give us Major Brutality, which is Spell Damage. I'm um, actually Major Sorcery, Spell Damage. So those two right there, Spell Critical, 10%, 20% extra damage and it gives us self-healing so we're going to be a little more survivable not so dependent on healers the nice thing about this is it has about a 23 second uptime so you're not going to have to recast every 10 seconds or so you're going to have a good 23 seconds when it's max leveled and then you go back to your other bar and keep it active so those are the two buffs we're going to get to do high-end damage so right now if i have both of those active on my primary bar 2500 spell damage 49% critical, 29,000 magic. We're not done. Next ability up. This, this ability, Inner Light, you can find in the Mage's Guild skill tree, the very first ability in Mage's Guild. And then Power Surge, you can find in Storm Calling, the last, uh, fourth ability in Storm Calling. The third ability we're going to use is in the Daedric Summoning, Bound Aegis, which got a huge buff. Huge buff. A lot of people are like, why in the heck would you use this? Increases your max magicka by 8%. That's right, 8%. The more magic you have, the harder you hit. It also gives us a small boost to armor and spell resistance. Most people go for the other ability, Boundless Storm, or the other morph, bound, uh, I forget what the other morph's called. That gives you a lot more speed and a lot more resistance, but it doesn't increase your magic. So for me, I like this morph. Now... My primary bar, 31,000 magic, 31,000. And if I go back to my master staff, 32,000. That's right, 32,000 magic. This thing hits like a truck. It is the original hits like a truck. And that's why increasing your max magic is going to make you hit much, much harder. Okay, so we got those two things on. We talked about power surge. We're going to keep that active. This is bar two. I use a double destruction staff setup, both fire. Now, you can use Lightning. It's probably better for a Sorcerer. However, I don't have the Lightning Master Staff, so I, I go with Fire for now. Because damage over time effects are really powerful in this build. The fourth ability here on Bar 2 is Fire Ring. It's the Morph of Impulse. It does an AoE dot. The good thing about Bar 2, which is, I'm kind of going to a back order here, but Bar 2 is kind of like a flex bar. Realistically, these are all your class skills minus one ability that comes from a weapon, which is Destruction Staff ability. So you could actually run Sword and Board. You could run Healing Staff and do a little healing. You could run, I don't know, Dual Wheel, Bow, whatever you wanted. Now, it's a magic-based build, so you know do something magical, but 
you don't have to use this solely for AoE. You can use more protection, maybe put Hardened Ward on here to do Sword and Shield. The results are endless, but the, the ability that you really need to have on here is Magus Wrath. This is our finisher. So when the enemy's health is around 20%, it procs a huge shock damage and deals AoE damage to other targets. It's on the back bar primarily because I only use this on bosses, most likely. So, you know, if you're going to switch back to this bar and use it once or twice, probably not too much worth it. If you're fighting Manacora and you're going to do a good burn phase for 30 seconds, definitely switch back and just spam this button. Okay. Energy Overload. Oh yes, this thing is an amazing. I, I need to get it maxed up too. So what Energy Overload does is a couple different things that are absolutely remarkable. One, it's toggled on. So I toggle it on like this. Two, if I attack, it drains my ultimate. Oh, there's someone over here. What it does is drains my ultimate, but also restores magic to me. Why is that so important? Because I never have to spell tap with this with this build. I never run out of magic. I use my ultimate and an AoE group to sh zap them and get back magic. Oh, and guess what? It also gives you a third bar. So notice when I toggle this on, my two and four keys actually switch, making it another way to access two more abilities that most people don't think about. So the other abilities I have on this is Dark Conversion. This turns stamina into magic. So I have basically a bunch of clever different ways to get back magic and make my sustaining near limitless magic. So you can use ultimate, you can just toggle on and use this ability. And the ability you want to use is Dark Conversion and Dark Magic. I haven't even used this that much. So it trades uh, resource health too and magic at the cost of stamina. So for a magic user, this is invaluable. Four second channel, you can cancel it early by blocking or removing. So that's how you sustain in this. Also, I have hardened ward on here. So if things get trouble, I get a 10K bubble on me that I can survive. Toggle back on. Okay, so bar two is really for keeping our one buff up, AOE damage or a flex spot, um, a finisher, and then getting magic back. Ah, come on, that looks cool. Okay, the primary bar. This is bar one. I also go with another flame staff. Now, I have, remember, I, I have both one and three are still tied up. Inner lights, bound agus. So there's not a whole lot of room to cast a bunch of different spells. Really, you're coming back there to finish targets. Keep on your buff. And then the other thing is force pulse. This is the ability in the Destruction Staff skill line that most people go with Crushing Shock. Crushing Shock got kind of a damage nerf, so it only do, it does 10% less damage than this. This basically does AoE damage to nearby enemies if they're already burned, chilled, or concussed, which we're going to be doing a lot of. So you lose the interrupt, but you gain a lot of damage and AoE range damage. So if you have to have the interrupt, you can go with Crushing Shock. But for me, I really like the extra damage. And at a low cost of 1,500, I can spam this thing all day. So primarily what we're going to do is use this as our primary attack. If you have magic and nothing else is going on, use this. Fourth ability. Oh my god. Crystal Frags, baby. Sea Frags. Yes, this thing is awesome. It hits like a monster Mack truck now. Believe me. So what, it, what the trick is to using Crystal Frags is, is to wait for a proc. And when I say a proc, that's like a way to say procurement. Something has to happen in order to trigger it. So Crystal Frags specifically, you get 35% chance every time you cast a spell to proc it. What this does is it costs a lot less, 50% less, and does 20% more damage. So if I were just to cast Crystal Frags on this little meatball over here, merry little meatball, poor little warm mouth, See, I charge it up like that. You don't want to do that. Even then, it's still hit for 12,000. It's going to hit 20% harder once I charge it up. So if I were just to cast a spell, let's watch. Bang. That. That's the sound, and then my hands light up. I also have a little add-on there that tells me I have a free proc. 20% harder, and it's going to insta-proc. It's going to insta-cast. So let's see the difference here. Let's get a proc again. There's a proc. Oh my god, finally. And then, bang. See, it's instant right there. And that hit for 11k without a crit. That's incredible. That's incredible. So 35% chance. What you're doing is using a couple different abilities, which you just saw, Liquid Lightning, waiting for a proc. Your proc C-frag is your number one most important thing to do.
Let's go talk about number two, which is Liquid Lightning. You saw me spamming it there. It's an AoE damage ability. I haven't even used it before. It does a shock damage synergy, so allies love it, especially tanks. But think about this. 855 shock damage every half a second. That's 1,600 damage a second, roughly. It's not even maxed yet. Let's see if we pump up our spell damage. It's even higher, 919. It's almost 2,000 damage a second. It lasts for 10 seconds and only costs 2,000 magic. The trick with this is it's a 4 meter radius, so it's kind of small. You want to wait for a boss or an enemy to kind of get positioned by your tank or someone else, then cast it. Think of it as a stable dot. 10 seconds, it's going to keep casting, and think of it as a 10 second dot, though you have to be careful with where you place it. So primarily how I open up is I cast a liquid lightning, then I go back to like force pulsing until I get a crystal frags proc, and then bang, I shoot it out. That's really all this bar is. For ultimates, Shooting Star is the number one most important ultimate. I don't have even this ability morph because it wasn't even that good until recently. The trick about this is, number one, you want to target an enemy that's not about to die or dead, obviously, because you're going to, once the meteor comes down, you're going to get ultimate for the person it hits and people around it. 12 ultimate per person. So as a sorcerer, if this only costs 170 ultimate, I'm getting 9 back up to 6. Do the math. You can put this up all the time. The cool thing about it is that people don't understand is after impact, targets in the area take 3100 flame damage every second for almost 12 seconds. Imagine liquid lightning going and this at the same time. That's almost, what, 5000 damage a second for 12 seconds? It's an incredible amount of damage. Once again, positions everything. Make sure the boss is parked and or the mobs are parked before you go cast this. Also, your tank needs to know that the area on the ground is where they take the most damage, actually, not just the, the initial cast. So it's be careful when you come to that. But use these combined. So you're going to do Liquid Lightning. Always use Shooting Star when it's up after the boss is in position. You're going to do Crystal Frags as it comes up and then Force Pulse in between. The simplicity of this is you're going to use Power Surge every 23 seconds to keep your spell damage high. If you can't, you can always use Spell Power Potions. Though, the awesome part about this build is you don't have to rely on these for high-end damage. You can use the other potions and just cast this ability. Use this for a finisher. Toggle on Energy Overload and zap them like Inter Emperor Palpatine. Or also use that trick that we used, Dark Conversion, to get back magic. You can do so much damage sustain. And now I'm going to go show you with a couple mobs out in the rift. I love riding out here to the rift because I can kill these monsters and they don't really pose much of a threat and also they're pretty stable. A cool thing you might notice right now on my UI is there's a little in the bottom middle portion of my uh, UI, you'll notice two little icons. This is a really cool add-on called Sork Helper. Yep, Sork Helper. Um, Sork Helper 1.2.2. It's awesome. What it does is it tells you when procs are up or not. It also tells you when to recast things. So if you're a Sork and need like maybe help on finding when the procs are happening or not, because I know I do, check out this add-on. Alright, so as far as combat goes, what I'm going to do. I start buffing up. So I get my two uh, abilities on, 32k magic right there. I'm going to pop my power surge, flip to bar 1. First things first, I would cast a Liquid Lightning here, but the Giant's going to move. So I'll Force Pulse. I got a Crystal Frags proc. Boom. Force Pulse again. Another Frag prop. Okay. And as you can see, they're already dead. Um, it's, yeah, these, these mobs need a little bit more life. But what you're doing is keeping that one Power Surge up. Liquid Lightning, once the thing gets in position. If it's not going to get in position, just go ahead and Force Pulse it. Force Pulse, once it gets in position, right there, got a Crystal Frags proc, dead D. So the things just don't even last too long because I'm just doing so much damage. But that's the basic part of it. Alright, so here's a couple bosses. Let's see if we can't get in with these guys. Buff, start off with a Meteor, proc, Liquid Lightning. I'm gonna, I want to keep them in that crap on the ground. Remember, that's what does all the damage. There we go. Liquid Lightning's down, cast it back up. They're just dying too fast. 
Um, so yeah, you hit really, really hard. The whole thing is, this is really, really, really simple. That's all you have to do. Wait for a crystal frag to proc. If you forget to cast liquid lightning, it's not the end of the world, but that's a lot where your damage is going to come from. If you forget to bar swap to do Mage's Fury, it's not the end of the world. Really what you're doing is just doing Force Pulse, liquid lightning, waiting for frags to prop, and do light attacks in between. So light weaving, all it is is clicking a button, then your ability, so it cancels the animation. So what I do, light attack, boom. Like a heartbeat. So you'll see that little, that little flicker of the light attack. There's a thing called medium weaving that will actually increase your damage even more. The reason why heavy attacks uh, do a little more damage, and then also you have to basically hold it down for just a split second longer, and then you'll get more damage because I wasn't going to show you. Try stat focus. Heavy fire attacks deal an additional 15% damage. So heavy, all it is is holding it down a little bit longer. A light attack literally just looks like this. One little fireball. If you hold it, let go, hold, let go. Two little fireballs, that's the difference. So if you're doing two little fireballs, you're gonna do a lot more damage over time. Keep that in mind. And that's really as simple as it gets. So as far as running out of magic, I mean, I can cast these spells or, I could sit here and cast this spell for a good two minutes and run out of magic. But I want to kind of show you what happens when I run out of magic, which is, go back to this bar, and let's go find a little little nugget giant over here. If you do run out of magic, you pop, toggle this on, you can one, either channel it, and you see I'm restoring 400 a second per guy. That doesn't work, you go to your dark conversion. Toggle it back on, and you're back in business ready to fight. And I'm weaving my two fireballs right there, Dead and gone. It's that simple. This thing almost produced 9,000 single target damage in Dragonstar Arena the very last fight. That was over 200 seconds long. Never ran out of magic. I was using potions, swapping to that bar to do that. That's the trick for sustained damage with ignition. Okay, by now you saw the gear sets that I was using. Now I want to show you it on the actual um, character and talk about why and how it's so effective. The most important part is Valken Scoria. It's Prox Meteors. I tried to do Mephala's and it does not even compare remotely how powerful this is. Thus, it makes sense to do fire damage and enchant our weapons with fire. Every damage over time effect you do, the more likely you are going to proc Meteors. Remember, you can proc more than meteor, one Meteor at once. Another thing is, that's why Liquid Lightning is so powerful. It considers it a damage over time, thus proccing Meteors left and right in AoE. So the Valken Scoriad, hypothetically you want all light armor, you want Infuse on your head and Divines on your shoulders. I got lucky with the Divine shoulders, but I really needed an Infuse light head. Well fitted, eh, okay. Do what you can, get the set. The next setup is Martial Knowledge. Yep, good old Martial Knowledge 4-piece is now the kind of new meta, if you will, in Elder Scrolls Online. It adds tons of spell damage. You can only get the VR14 stuff from um, Dolmens in Upper Craglorn and also Treasure Chest in Cyrodiil. I mean, excuse me, Dolmens in Cyrodiil. Cyrodiil, Cyrodiil, Cyrodiil. The VR13s uh, uh, and 11s, I still have two pieces of, and I'm still producing this much damage. I can see the Martial Knowledge probably getting nerfed, if you will, so I don't know if you want to fully legendary your gear. But either way, I have four pieces of Martial Knowledge. Boots, legs, gloves, chest. Chest is reinforced, not exactly the ideal stat, um, not exactly the ideal trait that you want, which is why you could switch it up for adroitness. You're going to wear one piece of adroitness on your gear. Now, it comes with well-fitted, too. So you might want to get rid of your crappiest trait on one piece of gear. That way you can get infused and divines on the rest. If not, the adroitness goes well with the neck. So it gives you more spell damage. You see a common theme here? Lots of magic, lots of spell damage, because I think those produce more damage than high-end critical does anymore. The Necklace of Adroitness right here gives you um, basically a lot of magic. I put reduced spell cost on it. You could even go more spell damage, but I feel like the sustained is just unrivaled if I have reduced magic cost here. I can just almost cast for days. So if you wanted to be super high and bursty, you could do spell damage, though I like it this way. 
Um, two Seared Delight. These are PvP items I was lucky enough to get with 500,000 AP. I enchanted those with spell damage, of course, and it's arcane. So massive, massive amounts of magic. Two there, so you can see a common trail damage. Spell damage, spell damage, spell damage, spell damage. As far as weapons go, I have a Master Inferno Staff. However, the trait is weighted. I would really like a precise one. Because if I used a precise on my primary bar, which I'm not in this case, I'm using flame damage with precise, that would add an extra almost 1,000 magic. That way, on bar 2, that's why I'm at 32,000 magic. And in bar 1, I'm only at... 31,000 due to the master weapon. So if you have an Inferno or uh, Inferno staff, great, use it. I actually do have a master lightning staff. The only problem, that is precise too. The only problem with it is it acts like a channel. So when, when I hit it, do a light heavy attack, it, it's hard to kind of weave in and out attacks. So that's why I recommend a fire staff for me. So those are the, the staffs that I go with. I like the flame enchant on just the typical arm thing, but you could do shock. You know, you are a sorcerer, but for me, it just seems like flame produces the most damage. So that's the gear setup. If you're lower level and, you know, you're not, you're new to the game and you don't have all this fancy gear yet, do 4-4. Four, four. You can do crafted 4 pieces. So you can do Twilights, which is a good crafted 4 piece. And actually, Torg's Pack is a really good crafted 4 piece. It's going to add some health, spell power, anything that adds health, spell power, um, max magic up, that sort of thing is going to be good. Try to find some jewelry that gives you anything. Go for arcane over health. You really want magic over health. As far as my stats go, I do 40 and 22. Now, all the attribute questions, I know you're going to ask me a bunch of them. Trust me, I can't really answer them. There's just so many factors into attributes. What grace you are, what level, how much passes you have, so on and so forth. What you want to get is 20,000 health. Now, I don't have 20,000 health right now because I don't have all the Cyrodiil buffs. Generally speaking, I, I do have all the Cyrodiil buffs and I'm at 20,000 health with 31,000 magic. So really, you want to get 20,000 health. Reason being, you don't want to get one-shotted. After 20,000 health, dump the rest of magic. It just so happens it's 22 uh, and 40 for me. The Mundus Stone I went with is the Mage. More magic, the better. Uh, critical doesn't seem to be as important anymore, and moreover, the Shadow Mundus Stone seemed like it was nerfed significantly, so I just go for max magic. I also did the Atronach um, for magic recovery, which was pretty helpful, but with one reduced enchant on my, on my gear, I think I can go for more magic. Especially, 32 magic is going to take a long time to run out of, especially if you're using potions and using ultimate, um, getting it back. And that's really the gear setup. It's pretty simple, and it's not too hard to get except from the Valken Scoria. Remember, you can't get this yet? That's okay. Do a four and four piece crafted with arcane jewelry, and you'll be just fine. Last but not least, we got champion points. Fortunately for me, I have a lot of champion points. I play a lot. I got over 101, I think, now. So this is kind of how I spend them. A lot into the Apprentice. Apprentice, you really want to get that 30-point passive spell uh, precision to get 12% spell critical. Now, the other points that I spend, honestly, I don't know exactly what is producing the most damage. I really don't. I think right now, until we figured all that out, it's best to spread a couple of them here and there. Elfborn basically is your, your new uh, spell critical damage, so your, your shadow Munda stones, your crits are going to hit harder. Especially with about 50% critical, this is a big bonus. Increases your flame, frost, and shock damage. That's going to be really relevant for us as Sorks, considering most of our damage comes from flame and, and shock. And then the amount of spell resistance that your spells in order, 5.3%. So I think a balance here is really good. I don't go with increased effectiveness of any healing you initiated, because I'm not really healing. Though if you were, you could spend some points there. That 30-point passive is really what we want to get. Um, and then also, the Lady. The Lady, I think, for casters is utterly amazing because of the 10-point passive. Anytime you get hit hard, 30% by fire, flame, shock, so on and so forth, you get a huge jolt of magic. So I actually was testing out Vampire to see if it was worth it, getting my magic back, just getting burned all the time. It ended up not being that worth it. I just died all the time and went uh, cleaned up Vampire. Though if you went vamp just to take advantage of this, I would put all your points into flame damage and try to uh, mitigate it as much as you could. If not, you can spread your points out here. And if you're not going to do a whole lot of PvP, this resilience doesn't really make sense. But the whole important thing of it is, get the 10-point passive here. You'll notice a ridiculous difference in the amount of magic you have. 
Some of the other good things here, you might want to go for uh, increased effectiveness of healing you receive, uh, maybe increase the effectiveness of potions. Um, some of these other ones are really good. So after you resurrect someone or you get resurrected. But I, si I stick with this because all the elemental damage that we get is pretty much easy to mitigate. So until I get more, maybe switching over to something else, maybe spell resistance, I really like that. So for the green, the mean green, I usually tell everyone to go for the syn synthogizer, uh, synergizer right away so you get more ultimate. And I really like that. However, I went straight into 30 points for the Magician to get a whole lot reduction on my magic cost. It really feels like reduction is actually way better than um, regeneration. So I was wrong once again on that. So I got my Inspiration bonus, and I'm going to go a lot of points in here. And then I'm going to switch over and go Arcanist to get that 30-point passive. It's going to take me a while to get it. But that's going to add a lot. Remember, the more ultimates you get, the more meteors you're dropping, the more damage you're doing. The problem is that in a, as a range caster, I'm not clicking a whole lot of ultimates like or uh, synergies like I would be doing a tank. So it's not that advantageous for me right now. And that's how I spent my champion points. So reducing my magic, getting that spell critical, and reducing some flame damage. And that 10-point passive is super important. Well, gang, that's a build. Here's another DPS test that I did, almost hitting 14k again. This is with some VR11 gear, but just to show you exactly the premise and how it's executed in a boss fight single target. This build excels single target damage, and it's just easy and fun. I hope you guys like it. I'm really going to work on next doing some tank healer videos, some things outside of the box, maybe some hybrids, PvP, working on something else. But I wanted to give you something for every class because damage is the most common thing. So, hope you like this video. Leave me some comments. What do you guys think? What could I do to improve it? And especially if you try it and it works for you, let me know. I'm always looking for more testimonials and especially new candidates for Pimp My Build. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited that you guys like my Sork videos and can't wait to do some more.